a couple of questions to ask you. Um, as far as your division goes, do you do you see yourself uh, being being up there with at the top of the welterweight division? Because um, everything that's going on politically in boxing, um, it seems like that PBC has like you know has like a really big, you know, um, um, huge uh, marketable stable that's uh, taken up the division. But do you think after this situation between Crawford and Spence, do you think that's going to open up your opportunities a lot more heading into the future? Yeah, I really hope so. I, I, I feel like, you know, politics has been controlling boxing for so long, but I think now with this new era, I think people are starting to, uh, you know, want the fights they want, and now people are starting to get them. So hopefully, like you said, when they make that Spence and Crawford fight and they can start merging all the networks and, and giving people what they want, I think it's going to be good for all of us as fighters as far as – you know, the elite competition right now, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I think I need a few more fights under my belt, but, I, I mean, I, I'm close. I feel like I'm knocking at the door, and I'm just, you know, a win or two away from, from getting a big game under my belt and hopefully getting on one of those big networks like PGC or Top Rank and pulling off a good upset. Yeah. Um, who, would, who would be your top, 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 top name opponents in the welterweight division that you would want to – like basically knock off like like if you had everything what would be your campaign to go after a certain list of welterweights to help you grow faster well i think it would have to be against um someone that is probably near the end of their career who still has a relevant name but that is also a winnable fight for me i feel like maybe like uh you know, Jesus Lopez or, or a fighter of that caliber, someone that has a good name with a good resume that I can, you know, get my foot in the door. And then once I get my foot in the door, I feel like I can get up against like, a, you know, a Blair Cobbs or one of those good up-and-coming yeah. names that, that would need, you know, a last-minute replacement. And if I could come in unknown and pull off an upset, I think then then that at that point I'd be in for a big name. Yeah, because I think the perfect, um, uh, the perfect uh, like opponent for you that I personally can see you defeat is probably your Dennis um, 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 Ugas, because um, knowing that he took a lot from Spence, I think, I think when he decides to potentially come back, of, like you know, into the division, I think, I think you could easily come into that like scenery and defeat like a guy like him because. Um, I think I think uh, the problem with uh, the welterweight division is that a lot of these guys that are at the top level, they don't want to fight guys like yourself that are hungry to knock at the door. So once you do get that good high level victory, it's kind of very difficult for those high level guys to not mention like um, your name, because um, like you said, they're playing that political division to make themselves more known in their own um, respective right. Yeah, definitely, definitely, because let's be honest, you fight a fighter like me. It's high risk and low reward. But once we do get one of those fights and one of those names under our resume, then they'll have no other option but to give us a bigger fight. Do you see yourself in the future probably going up against like a guy like Virgil Ortiz or Gerard Ennis or any of those guys? Yeah, and in the next, you know, couple of years for sure. Like I said, it's gonna take some molding and, and you know, it's gonna take some big wins and it's an uphill battle for sure. It's not gonna be easy. But like I mentioned earlier, I'm a fighter or two away from those kind of fights. Um, what's the difficult test that you see out of the welterweight division that would present you to be a much more seasoned fighter? Uh, do you do you think the welterweight division like you know, requires more mental strength or does it basically require certain physical skills to be successful? I think it's physical, man. This welterweight division is so stacked with young, hungry fighters and strong fighters like Virgil Ortiz and, and you know, Booth Ennis, I mean, the division is back. So, like I said, it's an uphill battle. But, I mean, I've been in this game for over 20 years. I'm a 35 veteran. So, I mean, this ain't nothing new to me. I'm ready for it. And I'm excited to see what the next couple years has in store for me. All right, sweet. Uh, the last question that I have is um, what influence do you want to bring back to your hometown, like, you know, when it's all said and done? Everybody loves to hear. <laughs> in all honesty, it. I don't really have a goal because I've already been doing that for so many years. Everybody here in my hometown knows that I fight for them. I'm already a local hero. So yeah. that one is already oh, in the bag. Now from here on out, 
I'm, I'm trying to break into that door, that next level. I'm already a hometown hero, and hopefully soon we can get on one of those bigger stages and put New Mexico on the map. Nice. I can't wait, man. Hey, thank you for the time, bro. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And you guys make sure you check out my website, Josh Pitbull Thoris. We got all our merch. Yeah, Online. Check it out. Also, man, if you're in the area, man, try to put the reservation. He cuts the best hair in the city. All my friends uh, get their hair cut through him. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he's the best barber. He gets clean, clean fades, bro. And 